Baby, donde tú quieras, yo paso a buscarte. Tú espérame afuera, pa' si no llamarte. No traigas paraguas como quiera, va a mojarte. La tempestad. Welcome back to Max Reaction. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're having a good day. I am. Anyway, we're going to react to a, re a, lot re a requested video. It's been requested a lot. It's Miss Universe Philippines 2018, Caterona Gray, and the bottom line interview. So I guess she answers a lot of questions. We learn a lot about her. Uh, we get to see a lot of her views and where she comes from. It's a little bit of a long video, but we're going to we're gonna react to the whole thing, all at once. So let's go ahead and check it out. Let's react to it. And uh, let's see what she's all about. We already know a lot, but maybe we'll learn something new in this interview. So let's react. Puspusan ang paghahanda sa kaliwat ka ng panayam sa kanya. They will speak in some English, I think. Excitement ni Catriona Gray para sa Miss Universe 2018. Isang araw matapos iyanunsyo ng Miss Universe organization na sa Bangkok, Thailand gaganapin ang big event, ikinaisip ng person inside and out. Video ni Catriona. Pagkaparamdam ng excitement ng pambato ng Pinas. She bleeds Philippine. She Philippine to the heart. Catriona sa kanyang mga advokasya. Isa na dito ang HIV AIDS awareness campaign. HIV awareness. Mula ngayon, lilipad na papuntang Thailand si Catriona. Pero bago yan, uupo muna siya sa hot seat kasama ang King of Talk. Such a beautiful smile. This is the bottom line. From a beautiful heart. Magandang gabi, Pilipinas. Welcome to the bottom line. Tonight Hello. is very special because this is our send-off episode for somebody very special. I'm very talking special. about Ms. Universe 2018, Katriona Gray. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me, Tita Boy. It's always a pleasure coming to talk to you. She's so kind-hearted. so much from you. I kick myself that I didn't bring my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> because I always tell Kat, your notes. <laughs> yeah, but it's true, Tita Boy. You always right. have like these these messages or, or, right. or techniques or ways to go about things that is really interesting and because new to of, yeah. me. And the last time we spoke to each other was during the ABS-CBN ball. Yes, and I co-hosted with you there. <laughs> oh, that's it awesome. So they co-hosted. Yeah, it was a fun night. Can I just tell you something? What the a blast. last interview that Pia did before she joined uh, Universe in 2015 was a bottom line. Mm -hmm. Here in this studio. Wow. <laughs> and we don't usually use the studio. It's, it's a, a different studio that we use. <laughs> mm. So... The universe may just be telling us something. They're lining up. <laughs> the universe did tell us something. They may just be telling us something. Nicole, let's go to your question. How would you show a cynic mm -hmm. how beautiful the world is? Ooh, well, I good think question. how we perceive our outer world is how we perceive our inner world. That's when true. you can see it from a lens of gratitude or you are able to pinpoint small beauties in everyday life or small acts of humanity Absolutely. or something that makes you smile, you really have to make an effort to see it. And so I would tell that cynic, Sometimes. You know, look around you. Is there something that's distorting your view of the world? And if there is, remove it and try and see the beauty in the world because it is a beautiful world. Mm -hmm. That was a terrific answer, and she is so right. Like, if you're constantly looking at the bad things, how can you see the good things? So that's the perfect answer, I would say. Let's continue. <laughs> I just came yeah. from Pondo today, so I'm, like, <laughs> feeling that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I would have gone there. Hindi naman ako Miss Universe. But I would have gone there. I went to Tondo, and I saw so much beauty. Right. And um, mm. a cynic is someone... Who doubts everything, including everything. beauty? Mm -hmm. yeah. I would have probably gone uh, uh, there, meaning I would have said I just came from a place where you wouldn't expect to see beauty, and I saw children. I, I actually read that story. Mm -hmm. I saw you could find beauty in a lot of so things. Mm -hmm. I'd share that story with a cynic. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's very. The other way that I would handle that question would be, excuse me. Can you just look at me and stare at me? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you say, and I thank you. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> I like Catarona's answer. Kristen, go ahead. 
question. I'm a secondary public teacher in Pampanga. Galing. Uh, yes, but this is my question. Mm -mm. If given a chance, you'll be a teacher for a day. What subject would you like to teach? Teacher for a day. Oh. And, why? Oh. and why? History. I like this question because yeah. I work a lot with kids. It would actually be life skills. Life that, skills. Especially if they're young, just how to interact with each other. Like simple things and how to share. She just wants to help the children. When something's taken away from them. Or, you know, if there is a dispute over something, how to reason out that children can understand because I think a lot of the times in our education system, basic life skills aren't taught. It's broken. Not put in place. So Sometimes. we go into adults trying to figure out the world that we come into and we're just, we have to make mistakes and we yeah. have to kind of learn through people telling us, hey, um, you know, you learn through mistakes in this way or there's a problem here. This is not how you handle it. So I think you need to start young. If you make it as simple as you can for children, then they'll grow into very reasonable. Absolutely. Uh, reasonable start young. Like help the children. Fantastic. It's always about the children. But the way to do it, but the way to do it, this is partly coaching for Kat, mm -hmm. because I am That's one I mean, of her teachers. <laughs> Life coaching uh, falls under what? falls under education. Uh, and education sa pagpapakatao, that's ESB in high school. There are other schools uh, na ibang tawag noon. Values education. Values mm -hmm. education. I can say values education or and proceed he did what you said, mm -hmm. yes. because that becomes a subject. Yeah. We're Absolutely. Ready. Okay. It's <laughs> 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 not just for Kat. This is for you, you know, who, who get into beauty contests. Mm -hmm. All right? All right. Let, let's go to, to, to you. Uh, hi, Kat. Hi. Um, so I just wonder, uh, what's the uh, biggest advice that you didn't take? And why? I'm a very stubborn person, and I'm Biggest also advice didn't take. And the thing is, when I get a vision for something, whether it's a creative pursuit or like an evening, nothing's gonna day, stop her. I'm really stubborn with my vision, and I've had so many people come to me and be like, "Hey, I can see you in something else," or you know, "That's not really fitted for you. You should try something." So else. she's hard-headed. Try it first. I have to Kinda. try my vision first. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. That's Why good though. Follow your dreams. Stay true to my vision, and then explore others and learn that way. Than never listening to what I want. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, but you could have been more straightforward. Mm -hmm. Somebody wanted me to wear a gown. I didn't take it. <laughs> it's more powerful, and then you can go into. Usually, I have a vision of the things I like. Very good answer. Uh, usually, I have a vision of the things I like. Some people want me to put my hair this way, you know, and I just. Dude, you don't have hair. That uh, somebody wanted wanted me to wear a gown, and I didn't. That was the last time I didn't take an advice. You know, it, it, yeah. it's it's it, it's not powerful. And okay. It's easier to digest when you give the first. Yes. That the first line is very strong. You know, mm -hmm. the last time I had a conversation with Pia a couple of days ago. She doesn't give up on her dreams. What she didn't forget was when I said, Pia, pag ninenerbios ka na in front of the world and competing against over 80 women, some of the most beautiful women, whatever you say, end strong. Yeah. End strong. <laughs> and sound right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be <laughs> okay, right. Let's go a step further. Hi, Steven. So, ano yung uh, say mo? Ano yung sabi mo sa pagtanggal ng Filipino language at panitikan sa college curriculum? I think it would be really sad if we were to reach that point. One, because I feel like when you reach a certain age, you will have an appreciation for what the dialogue is, the poetry of it, the history of it, how it's represented in our culture. Whereas, if you were to take that out, who else will pioneer our language for the next generation? Right, don't take it out. <laughs> don't take it out. <laughs> Keep the language. Me, 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 me. And also, it's very difficult in beauty contests. Sometimes, you start very well, but you don't know how to end it. Yeah. Because you want to say more. Mm -hmm. Don't. That is a strong answer, period. Mm -mm. I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but wonderful. That's the handle. You have any question? Okay. So, Kat, I know that you competed before for Miss World. Yes. So, so nakikita ko ngayon, 100% ready ka na to win the crown. Thank you. So, are you ready not to win the crown? Never consider failure. Why? Are you because ready to win the crown? Like Hell yes. That in your vision. It'll distract you. It'll withdraw your energy from you. And I need 100%, 120% of my energy to go towards winning. 
<laughs> oh, <God>. Okay. <laughs> Go out there to win. When and that's you it. are surprised by a question, phrase it again. I mean, ask me the question again. Uh, are you ready not to win the crown? It's a distracting. You're ready not to win the crown because the way you made love. I'm not not going to win the crown. Won, I'm going. Uh, you know, I saw you win, mm -hmm. and you're ready for the crown, etc. And then bigla ang tanong mo is negative. Go to the phrasing. No, I am not. I am never ready not to get the crown. That's right. It, 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 it's that strong. Yeah. Push go, the go negative the out. Go to the line. Because it's, uh, it, it, it's a distracting question. Mm -mm. N nobody ever prepares for failure. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And certainly I am not. Yes. Boom. Remember, a short answer, a long answer, is not tantamount to a wonderful answer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the shorter the answer. Short the and strong and to the point. Because that silence when you say, no, I am never ready for failure. You can add a couple of points. I worked so hard for this crown, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you say thank you, and there's a silence, it's a dramatic silence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's a poetic silence. It's, right, let's go it's to true. You. Hello, Kat. Good evening. Hi, John. Hi. So what kind of validation do you get, if any, from a strong social media following? It really would depend on the following. And Any my validation. Following I can see are a bunch of very supportive people who really interact with what yes. I put out there. That's really important to me, interaction, because it's a two-way conversation. Absolutely. I'd rather have people that participate in what I'm saying rather than people who just follow and then don't attribute anything. Just two, to what yeah. I'm that, that's very good. You know, ones that interact, ones that believe in what you're doing. I mean, that's just motivation in itself. Ones that tell you, man, you're doing a good job. I, I'm following what you're doing. That just pushes the drive. So I, I see where she's coming from. Very good answer. All her answers are very good. What am I saying? Why? Uh, it didn't answer the question, but she sounded beautifully yeah. right. <laughs> the, the oh. You know, but what John is asking, Kat, is. Salahat ng interaction mo sa social media, ano yung, what was the mm. best validation mm. that you got? You know, so you have to go to a line. You have to go to a post, a reaction, a share, or a comment mm -hmm. that just got you. And what comes to mind? Was that the it question? It would have been this really lengthy post that I read once that was posted by a supporter that just said, I followed you ever since day one. I've seen how you've grown. I've been along with you for your whole journey. And I'm just so proud to be there with you when you're going through to your next wow. one. Wow. And, you know, it's just that appreciation that someone would be there since day one. That and then you that end up answer with beautiful. And you end up answer by blah, blah, blah. Because you're doing I'm good. Mm -mm. Doing wonderful. good. I love that question, though. Ganda. Ganda. But, and then you go into specifics. Mm -hmm. You go into that lengthy. It's, it's lengthy, but this is what I remember. There was somebody who, and then you tell mm -hmm. the story, and uh, since day one, and you don't, you don't get this every day. And to him or to her out there, I'm grateful. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to you. Yeah. Hi, Kat. I'm going to ask you a very serious question, so it goes uh, like this. Okay. Given the current economic state of the Philippines, the inflation rate, and the current Philippine exchange rate, mm -hmm. how would you convince the Filipino people that it is still more fun in the Philippines? <laughs> mm, I think we really have to learn to love local. What does that mean? That means sourcing our products and building up the livelihoods of our farmers and yes. the people who make products in the Philippines so Stay that local. we are engaging in our own economy and we're not sourcing outside all the time. Right. In this way, you build can build up the small provinces, make them more tourist attractions, get people to travel and see and love their country because there's so much to fall in love with in the Philippines. Oh, yes. And I think we just need to re that love for our country and our people. Wonderful. Wonderful. We're getting there. Let's go to you. Mention. Absolutely. Hi, Ms. Catriona. Hello. Actually, Mike, I really love seeing you working closely with your advocacies. And recently, mm. I watched your IG story and you said earlier <laughs> that you came from Pondo yeah. just yes. to meet these less privileged children. Mm -hmm. So as an advocate of education, what can you do to address the current state of the LUMAD schools here in the Philippines. The LUMAD schools? Yes. Well, the LUMAD schools, these are voluntary, voluntarily run schools by, indi by indigenous people. Mm. Um, wow. But then currently children are having a hard time. They're going to struggle because they can't hold classes and they're 
classrooms because of the ongoing dispute in Mindanao. Right, right. From working closely with education, it doesn't have to be in a classroom that a child can receive knowledge. It can be anywhere. It can be in a household. It could be through a book. And I think that as long as a child can access some kind of information, whether it be through a family member More or access. a teacher that would come to a house or even through a YouTube video, there's always some aspects where a child can learn and grow. Absolutely. So, even though we should take steps to really resolve the disputes that are going on that are stopping them from getting a formal education, which of course is very, very important. Right. We can still make small steps for the time being to facil facilitate that lack that we're experiencing right now. Okay. What a what an awesome answer and it's true. Like if there's an obstacle, do something that's gonna avoid the obstacle. Like, you know, teach your own kids, give them something to learn. Um, like she said, like sometimes sometimes conflicts arise and you can't get to where you need to be, but it doesn't mean we can't stop learning because even as adults, we learn every single day, whether you realize it or not, we're learning constantly. And a young mind, they're, they're soaking up everything. So if they can't get to their school, like she said, fill their minds with knowledge of whatever, a book, YouTube video, whatever you can get a hands on. And that 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 le that leaves it up to the adults. So the adults need to push that, and um, just what it is. Mm -mm. Wonderful. And the way to handle that, because like Lumad is um, can, can be something that's foreign to you. Yeah. You know, indigenous people. Mm -mm. Lumad. That that's a very right. serious uh, uh, cultural, uh, traditional, political issue in the country. Mm -mm. But the way to handle that is the, the context clues. Context clues. It's very close to you. That's why you handled it well. Mm -mm. You know, because whether you're Lumad, for as long as uh, you're a child, you know what it is about. Yeah. And right. when you talked about access to whatever that can make their lives better, access to education, formal access. or informal, you make a stand. Mm -hmm. Because I, one that is of making my a stand. strongest advocacies is to improve the lives of children. You have That's to right. end it well. Yeah. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, in, in a contest, in a contest, uh, you, you are sometimes asked questions very specifically. Deep like questions. That like may it. not be, you know, yeah, familiar, but still it's about children. Mm -hmm. Because in a contest, you wouldn't say, you know, these are Lumas who cannot go to school because they don't have classrooms. But it's children in general. Of the children. Mm -hmm. This world has to be kinder to children. This world has to be better for children. This world has to do everything. For, for, for children. children. Yes. The power of three is very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Q&As and even in public speaking, uh, it's, it's eat, pray, and love. Let's go to you, uh, Dom. Eat, um, pray, and love. I'm going to throw back Tito Boy, no? Before joining Binibining Pilipinas, mm -mm. you're part of a camp. Mm -hmm. And um, maraming na puzzled when you joined Binibining Pilipinas na bigla kang naging independent. Mm -mm. Until now, Hindi ba rin namin alam, most of us, kung ano yung reason. So my question is, would you rather be the one who hides the truth or the one who tells a lie? Oh, rough. I would rather be the one who hides the truth because I believe no matter what, the truth will always come out. Right. And, you know, I always believe in staying true to myself, which is what I did in being an independent candidate. I just wanted to create my own team. I there mean, you instead go. of having the focus on multiple girls, I got undivided focus from a team of people that I chose myself. So I right. was allowed to be a creative Gel together. in that space and surround myself with a core team. And it's one of the best decisions I made. It's a fantastic answer. You know why? It's so gut. So <laughs> she was made to choose, and she chose. Right. Uh, you know, what, what truth? What, what, what? No. It has to be so... <laughs> Oh, really? You're so ready. <laughs> okay, Tian, let's go to you. Oh, hi. Hi. Mine is a little bit serious, oh. but um, and uh, I know and I'm very aware that you're an HIV <laughs> awareness advocate. Mm -hmm. Do you really think that ambassadors and an ambassadress are like beauty queens, mm -hmm. have a voice, and can move mountains on convincing the government in making it a national priority? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I like that question. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I think we do have a voice to use. Yes. Why? Because governments listen to the people. 
That's right. And if I can be a voice to the people and either empower them to speak up or to somehow create awareness or education about the cause, just like I do and as a HR Bring people together on it. And go around for campus tours. That's when you have enough collective voices. That's when the government will start to hear us. V very good. It, it's so basically she said she has the voice to rally, rally the people, you know. A person here and a person here, their voice isn't loud, but you get a person here and 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 a person here, the voice can be heard. Perfect answer, once again. Sounded again so right. I mean, <laughs> uh, because I knew your question. I, I, I knew your question. Your question is, can beauty queens be effective to convince government, you know, to make HIV programs a priority? Yeah. Cut took a different route. Do you, do you get the difference of the question? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But the first thing that came into my mind is like, obviously no beauty queen's gonna walk into parl or to government and say, hey, let me convince you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. Because as right. one person, that's not enough to make someone sit up and listen. Okay. A bunch of people. Sometimes it does work. I get what she's but, saying. You know, even as being a beauty queen, what I'm amazed at is how we rally people together. Whether it be for the pageant, whether it be for fundraising or, you know, just awareness that kind of ripples across. Oh, yeah. I think that's a beauty queen's greatest asset. That's right. Let's go to Big Amir. Boys. Hello, beauty queen. Hi, Kat. Hi, uh, Before I start my question, I'd just like you to know that you're currently leading in our musicologist hat. Whoa! <laughs> that is because we believe you fit to the title Miss Universe. Oh. Mm, thank you. Okay. <laughs> this morning, see you, see you in Thailand. Thank you. Uh, oh, do you really sweet. go wherever yes. it is held? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we have a correspondent uh, who is covering different types. We, misosology. Yes, misosology. Okay. okay. Yes, my question would be, how will you convince a feminist that beauty pageants like Miss Universe are still relevant and not shallow in today's society? I believe the aim of feminism isn't to bring women down for what they choose to express themselves as or what they choose to pursue. Right. I think, and I, well, I believe that the whole aim of feminism is to support women in whatever they choose to do, as long as Absolutely. it's considerate and respectful to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's it. Uh, I hope there's a question asked. Oh, <laughs> Let's stop this. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> The vibe's right on yeah. spot. The vibe. Eric, has, you've asked. Uh, Eric, go ahead. Hi, Eric. Hello. I've been uh, following your beauty pageant journey since 2016. Oh, thank you. And yes, and I rarely hear you comment on political issues. Mm -hmm. So I have two questions. First one is, is it something that you really avoid? And then second one, what, what political issue or issues do you feel strongly for mm -hmm. or against? And why? So your Ooh. first question, why don't I speak a lot about politically charged subjects? Yeah. I like to take it if it's, if it's at the time and place. I'm not going to be a public figure that just spouts opinion without being considerate of both sides and validating both sides because right. at the end of the day, I wear a Philippine sash yeah. and the Philippines is made up of millions of Filipinos with different actually, points of actually, view she's... and different political right. standpoints. So I never want to polarize that. Mm. Whereas for my own individual beliefs, she didn't want something terrible that I'm size passionate down. about is really, it's inequality. In that, um, unequal access to basic human rights, such as education. And this yeah. is something close to my heart because I work in Tondo a lot. Absolutely. Uh, even education working with Love Yourself, where there are so many areas that are experiencing just a gap of awareness of basic education. And it alters people's lives. So if alters I the nation, anything, really. it would be for the government to really just bunk down and assess the Philippines as a whole. Not just Manila, because we have some great educational places and yeah. facilities here. But in all the Philippines should receive Every bit access of it. to education. Because then we can rise up as one people and be able to storm forward. <laughs> as one, baby. Philippine pride. I like that. Good answer. And Kat, it would <laughs> sound really, really great if you always go back to your story.
-hmm. And that's, that's what you did just now. You go back to Tondo, you go back to children, mm -hmm. you go back to education. Uh, you relate inequality to education. It's really, really fantastic. It's you know why true. It's because it's, it's true, true. Like, uh, I know you've traveled most, in most parts of our country mm -hmm. and have uh, um, immersed in local cultures. Mm -hmm. In the recent Miss Universe that was held here, Amo said that it lacked um, in promoting our culture as a nation. As a beauty queen, and mm -hmm. I know for a fact that you love to travel, <laughs> yeah. um, how would you help in promoting the culture of the Philippines um, in the international community? In the international well, actually, community. I took the task of making my national costume very seriously. Mm -hmm. I wanted to represent the authentic Filipino culture. Yes. So I traveled and I researched. Wow. I asked Discovered. questions because I wanted to step out on the international stage. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I am too. For you guys to see it, I really am. I'm bursting. And, and I wanted to just showcase our culture in a way that maybe one Filipino would be like, wow, that makes me proud. And another Filipino would be like, I never knew that about our culture. How amazing. Right. So Educating again. <laughs> Educating. I love the answer. You can probably just add a line because that can be tricky. It's very tricky because culture is a way of life. Mm -hmm. right. Clothing is just one. Mm -hmm. Culture is about... Uh, but you do not expect to say a queen. I'm just giving cut some mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. You do not expect a queen to cover everything that has something to do with culture. Right. But as a queen, as a queen it matters a lot. Because how I present myself internationally mm -hmm. is visual. Yeah. And I want to wear something that is Filipino. Mm -hmm. Yes. John. Some uh, beauty queens, after their reign, they mm -hmm. pursue going to show business. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself being in show business? If not, what would you pursue? I could imagine myself going more in the direction of music. Mm. Big question. Um, wow. As I said, arts is something very close to me. I love watching Broadway. I love musicals. I love singing. I love watching live music. Oh, yeah. So music is something I definitely love. Music like is healing. More. And other than that, I would love to have my own business. I've always been passionate about Philippine textiles, so I would love to find a way to market that to more people and then provide a livelihood program to give back. Wow, Miss Wave would be back. a textile magnet. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only thing that's confusing there, Kat, mm -hmm. is that music is showbiz. Oh, okay. In a way. But, uh, yes, yeah. it can be part of uh, the, the show sure, business. Yeah. So the way to handle right. that is mm -hmm. if um, you know, a little bit of music, yeah, that, that's the showbiz part of me. But I mm -hmm. love the textiles. Okay. Love the textile. Serious? Mm -mm. Let's partner. You'll see it in my wardrobe. Yeah. And miss let's it. partner. <laughs> yeah, surprise. Okay, uh, let's go to um, Justin. Hi, Miss Kat. Hi, Justin. Uh, so I have a very contemporary question and issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to know what what are your thoughts on the recent signage of the mental health me mental health app. Pack. Oh. I think it's a great step forward because I believe that there's more awareness now than there ever was before. And it's something that usually wasn't talked about because we saw it as a weak will or a weak sense of character or maybe they're just going He's through so something smart. bad. Or, you know, we made up all of these excuses to color over what was the truth behind it. But now that we have something being put in place, the proper education can find its way into the hands of people who need it. And educate, the educate. can start to break apart. Mm. A lot of her answers leads back to educating, whether it be that, the children, or whatever. Education's big, big, big part of life. And if you don't have enough education on different matters and different topics, um, you can fail. You can fail as a person. You can fail as a, a town, city. You can fail as a country. So education is key. I like how she keeps going back to education. That's just so, so true. Oh no, I want to cry. <laughs> That's a wonderful, wonderful answer. As you said, uh, mm -hmm. do you think the Philippines is ready for uh, this app, the bill, the mental health bill? Why wouldn't we be? Yeah. I mean, everyone has reached a point of awareness in, in their community, in their personal life. We're more interconnected more than ever. And with that, we need to start 
thinking about what are they going through? What is my family member going through? What is my friend going through? Is right. so much more than what lays on the surface. And in an age of social media, we need to look below the surface now more than ever. Yeah. Asaka, uh, seriously speaking, um, it's going to save a lot of lives. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Martin, have you asked? Not yet. Go ahead. Um, hi, Catherine. Hi, um, when Miss Universe organization or Miss Universe official Facebook page uh, uploaded your photos of, of the official candidates, mm -hmm. you got the most likes and mm -hmm. comments. There are goods, uh, there are good comments and there are bad comments. Mm -hmm. I just right. want to ask, what was the worst thing said about you and how did it affect you? Ooh. I once read a comment that said, She's so fake and scripted. Nothing that comes out of her mouth is real. Ooh. And Ooh. it hurt. Why? Because I am a huge believer in authenticity. Like, right. authenticity is really important to me. Be you. And be truthful. Even to a point that my charity work is the foundation of what I do. So to have someone just judge me at a drop of a hat and, and say, try to tear oh, you down. Papa, she's just saying that because she's a beauty queen, maybe she doesn't really care about this charity. Maybe it's just a tool for her for publicity. Oh, it hurt, but words. then I realized that person doesn't know what they're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Why would I let them affect me in that way when I know exactly what I've put in the work for and other people know it too. Yeah. That's an absolutely good answer. That's just somebody trying to be a bully. Like and a bully through a screen, so not only is, is he a bully or she's a bully, they're a coward, and cowards pay no attention to him. It doesn't matter what a coward or a bully says to you, because you know what you did, and she knows what she did, and she knows why she does it. She does it because she cares. So there's going to be bullies. If you're going to be in social media, there's going to be bullies. There's going to be bullies. Even there, there's they, people try to bully me in my comments. I just laugh and say, whatever. Whatever, it's your problem. But anyway, another good answer. You know, but it would be stronger. Kath, what I want you to do is prepare um, how you would close answers. It's very important for beauty yeah. queens. Like, wonderful answer. So when you go back to it and you say, I wanted to tell this person who posted that message, dear, uh, or darling, or honey, whatever, <laughs> um, accuse me of anything. Right. But not fakery. <laughs> so after explaining how you got hurt and how people can be so judgmental, mm -hmm. you go back to the original question and you say, I wanted to tell the guy, accuse me of anything, but I'm not a fake. Mm -hmm. right? It makes it more theatrical. Yes. Yeah, it does. Who else has a question? Yes. That's what I was laughing yes. at, his facial go expressions. Ahead. Okay, because, you know, whether or not you're a beauty queen or you're just a person living your life, mm -hmm. there will always be people always. who say bad things about you, but then always. you're my queen. <laughs> so how do you handle situations like this? Like, what virtue do you um, function on? Right. I'm not one to really show what I feel in that kind of situation. Why? Because usually the reason that there is kind of that dispute is either a misunderstanding or you just don't know each other well enough. Right. Does that make sense? So if we don't have just that relationship evil. in the first place, I'm not going to pretend like there is, but I'll be civil. But I won't particularly judge them completely on that either because maybe at somewhere along the line they had a wrong impression of me or I on them. Maybe we had a miscommunication. Maybe. I think everyone has their own reasons. We haven't really started. I haven't done my interview with Kat. So don't judge quickly. <laughs> okay, Kat, how badly do you want the crowd? I've put so much into this journey, Tito Boy, and the people around me can be tested. Everything to that. in it. I'm really gone above and beyond. And it isn't Our soul. in a way, it's not just for myself anymore. Yeah. Everyone feels so involved, whether it be um, my charities or, or my core team or even just all of the supporters and fans. Everyone feels like they're a part of this. Right. So I want to do it all for everyone else. It's not just her, it's a lot of are people. Incredibly high. <laughs> yeah. Are you pressured? Yeah, there is pressure. I think pressure comes with a Philippine sash. But this is different. Part of being it's a, a person. Pressure. It's not it's a really debilitating a Can I be pressure? very honest? Mm -hmm. Pia words back in 2015 mm -hmm. was a surprise win. Catriona is a sure win. Yes. My question is, <laughs> who are you? 
as a queen? I would never consider myself a sure win because right. I don't have that kind of head on my shoulders. Right. I always see that it's it's never a walk in the park. There is so many things to know. always surprises. And no one's perfect. Like, there is hard work that needs to put in. It's not like I could attend and, oh, there it goes. She's right. going to be the winner. I never feel like that. So it doesn't feel like I'm a short win. That's a good Even way of thinking, I'm too. I'm high on everyone's expectation lists. There is that aspect of it's a competition. It could be anyone. Okay. Everybody has very high expectations. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What about yours? I'm... How much are you expecting to win the crown? I'm expecting expecting to get exactly what I put in. Holy so if I'm expected. rewarded for the effort and my performance, then I'll be happy. <laughs> and if you were to be rewarded for what you put into this journey, mm -mm. do you deserve the crown? Yes. I would say so, yes. Yes, just say yes. <laughs> Going into the contest, what is your biggest fear? My fear is losing my groundedness. Because, you know, I, I want to always be grounded. I always want to come from a grateful and humble standpoint because yes. that's just what I admire in people when they're humble and Being they're grounded. Humble, and grateful, sometimes when it's really hectic and there's so much on the line, there's so much at risk, and it's a flurry of different things and time is constrained, sometimes you can lose your footing. Right. That's Don't sell yourself. Do because that's what grounds me. That's what keeps me sane. You know what you do? Get one friend. I know you organized a uh, group chat, mm -mm. right? You know what you do? There's this wonderful story about Julius Caesar. I don't know if this is an urban legend, but somebody told me. One wise man told me in a conversation many years ago mm -hmm. that when Caesar was being paraded around Rome, there was a guy, Salikudnya, mm -hmm. who was saying, you're human. Mm -hmm. You're human. Wow. You're human. And kept on repeating the line. Right. You're human. Because you're right. You can get lost. Yeah. You really can get mm -hmm. lost. Cut three things that you We're think will help you win the crown. Tatlong bagay lamang. Luck, passion. Luck, passion. Luck. Sounds like the, 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 the seeking of too long. <laughs> <laughs> luck, because, luck because if it's your time, it's your time. Right. Like I have always believed everything happens for a reason. Like That's God's true. divine timing for everything. Passion, because with passion, you will put your hard work in and right. your heart will be there. Your everything. And love, because as a beauty queen, I want to have love for my country every step of the way. <laughs> yeah. Mm. We will not forget that. Yes. Okay, luck, passion, passion love. love, and love. Wow. <laughs> Does losing occur in your mind? Do you entertain the, that th no. Never entertain it. Never. <laughs> That's a Even distraction. Even if it just in the side, like, get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's just confidence <laughs> of a if queen. If you were to rate 1 to 10, 10 being the most prepared, how prepared are you? Right now? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I would really say, like, a 9.9. .9. Why? No. Because 9 .9. By, by the usual standards of Miss Universe, we're only required to do certain things, to have a gown, to do preliminary, to do evening gown, right. interve uh, interview. But, guys, I've gone above and beyond. It hasn't come out yet. It's coming out this month and next month, but I've gone above uh, and beyond with my team because uh, I just, I wanted to over do the top. that. Like, with nine months under my belt, my creative side got, like, churning, and I was like, what What can I do? So my national costume, different aspects are done in a different way, and I've really put effort. So just that extra effort on top of what is expected of me gives right. me high points. The 110%. No, I totally agree, because 99% and a 1% should allow some surprises. Yes, exactly. You know, and that's very important. That moment is very important. Mm -hmm. So enjoy the moment, because that's when that magic happens. Mm -hmm. Here's one thing uh, that's happening in 2018. You're competing against Angela Ponce mm -hmm. in Spain, yeah. who is a transgender woman. Mm -hmm. What is your stand on, you know, a transgender woman being uh, one of the competitors in the universe 2018? I'm open to it because individually I see beauty queens more than 
a physical aspect. We represent something. That right. has to be what we're there for. And she has a purpose. She is that voice for the transgender community. And if she can further educate people about what are the needs of the transgender community to get us to be more compassionate towards them, because I have close friends who are transgender, so I've heard right. their experiences. And there is a lot of work to be done in how we, we come towards them. And Kat, if you're oh, I hate person, that in the world. Can you just add one line? Mm. Please tell the world that the universe knows that Angela Ponce is a woman. Because mm. she didn't just wake up one day and was like, oh, I feel like being a woman today. She is a woman. She feels it in herself. That she is identifies she herself is. as a woman. Exactly. And therefore, she is a woman. Mm -hmm. Last question. I am Katriona Gray and... And what? I am Miss Universe 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta end it like that. Because that's how it ended in the competition. Guys, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was you good. Have my love and respect. You, you have my love and respect, my queen. <laughs> and we know what happened. This, <laughs> this interview. Universe 2018. Filipinas, that's the bottom line. Good night. That, that was an interview, and we know what happened. She took the crown. She, picked, she became Miss Universe of the Philippines. And we learned a lot through all these questions. We learned how smart she is, how grounded she is, how much she cares for the Philippines, the Philippines people, the Philippines children. And everything about the Philippines, she truly cares. And uh, and she just screams confidence. And she screams confidence in whatever whatever, uh, whatever her goal is in life. And it seems like she meets all her goals. She pushes all the negative things out. And we can learn a lot from that um, in our everyday lives. Because we all, we all go through negative things. And if we can learn from her and do what she's doing and push them out so we can concentrate on what we want, what we need, and um, I think we'd be better off. So you can learn so much through her actions and her words and her inner being, because her inner being is the Philippines. It's it's kind, it's love, it's grounded, it's, uh, it's a good place. And I'm so happy that she won. Can't wait to see what she does throughout the year and past, past her career as a uh, Miss Universe, because she's gonna continue to do good things because that's just who she is. But what wonderful questions, thoroughly enjoyed them, learned so much, and um, just can't wait to see what it becomes. But anyway, those are my thoughts, those are my feelings, those are my reactions. What's your thoughts, feelings, and reactions? I don't know. Comment down below! Also, please join my family by hitting that subscribe button, become part of the Max Reaction family, and if you have any video requests, comment those down below as well. Uh, there's also social medias. Join me in social media. I need more social media friends. But anyway, I'll catch you later. Peace, love, and happiness. Bye-bye.